Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, now, our final conversation this morning is on organized labor and the minister, uh, ministry rather, of finance. The organized labor is, uh, again, up against the federal government, and as usual, it's all about salaries. Labor unions have rejected the plan to slash the salaries of Nigerian workers. They say they are shocked by a statement from the Ministry of Finance that salaries may be slashed as part of a plan to reduce the high cost of governments. Uh, of course, um, this is one of the things that we had shared earlier in the, on the breakfast this morning um, that made the headlines across uh, you know, the country. And it, you know, is once again, I think I would agree, you know, and stand, you know, with Labour, with, you know, an area of the person who's shocked um, at this plan. The federal government would always, you know, put out statements with regards to reducing the cost of governance, um, about government spending, you know, and, you know, Nigeria not being able to afford, you know, the level of spending that's going on in the country. But it never um, affects the National Assembly, never affects the politicians, never affects governors, never affects, you know, the local government chairman, doesn't affect the presidency. Every one of these measures that, you know, the Nigerian government has thought about to reduce its cost of governance has been targeted at the people. In every single way that the Nigerian government has thought, let's make more money, let's increase our revenue, has been targeted at the Nigerian people. If we're having a conversation for any reason whatsoever about reducing salaries for Nigerian workers, are we having the same conversation about reducing the cost of living for Nigerian workers? Are we having the same conversation about reducing the cost of electricity or the cost of petrol or the cost of foodstuff in the market? We've spoken about inflation and how we, we currently are dealing with another um, inflation figure that is uh, completely shocking. So how do you have a, you know, an idea? How do you even think about reducing the, the Nigerian um, worker's salary when even what he currently is receiving is not enough to you know, deal with the current cost of living in Nigeria? There should be a serious cost of living in Nigeria. Um, <laughs> We're living the series, actually. Yes, you know, and so... it, it should be a, a very, very long series, just sharing what it really means to survive in, in, you know, in this country. Um, how do you have that conversation when the same Labour has protested against increasing electricity tariffs? Nothing really was done. The tariffs are still high. The same Labour has protested against, you know, reducing the cost of petrol. We keep hearing these excuses about subsidy and, you know, how, you know, we can't really have cheap petrol in Nigeria because, you know, it's dependent on, you know, cost of, of you know, oil prices and all of that um, in the world. So why will this ever be considered? when we still have billions of naira that goes into funding the National Assembly every year. We still have National Assembly members receiving millions and millions of naira every month um, for, you know, as a um, salary and as their wages. We still have state governments um, spending security votes or whatever it is every month unaccounted for. It, nobody gets to audit any of this. We still have a government that doesn't know exactly how much it loses every day um, uh, through leakages in government. Billions and billions of naira that just disappears in Ni Nigeria space without being accounted for. Well, we so still don't really, have borders that are closed. Really, you've said it all regarding this particular issue because it makes me ask myself, the statement to reduce the cost of governance, it seems like a political one. We keep hearing this year in, year out, want to reduce the cost of governance, want to reduce the cost of governance. But, you know, just like we had Shinwo Onigminde um, from Budget yesterday and had, you know, other guests to analyze the situations, we found that there are lots of projects that are in the budget that shouldn't be. 316 duplicate projects worth billions of naira. Why is the government not checking those leakages? Why is the salaries of politicians, you know, still one of the highest in the world? And the government says, let's reduce the cost of governance. And the first place you can think to cut is a civil servant who's earning 30,000 naira. And is even struggling well, for that 30, 30. Yeah. is even struggling for that 30,000 naira to be paid. So it's just an irony that a government that is constituted to serve the people end up serving themselves. Like, you know, we had one of the guests yesterday say that it seems that the budget is an extension of personal interest rather than be a budget of, you know, a budget that would uplift the lives of people, change the economic situation of Nigeria, it seems like one that simply enriches politicians. So if you want to cut down the cost of government, we know where to start from. 
not civil servants who are earning little money, not civil servants who don't even get paid, civil servants who, after working so many years, they can't even get their pension, civil servants who can't afford treatment. That's the people, that's the salaries of people you want to cut. It just is irrational. So I'm, I'm happy that Labour seems opposed to this. They're condemning this, criticizing this, and saying they would not let this stand. So let well, the government focus on places that are basically gulping up lots and lots of our money and begin from there. Good luck to Labour um, also. We've also um, seen them make similar statements in the past, you know, and I'm not sure how successful they've been uh, with um, uh, protesting uh, moves by the government. But that's, you know, all we have today. Hopefully we have an extended conversation about this tomorrow on the program. Thanks for being a part of uh, the Thursday morning's edition of The Breakfast. And if you missed out on any of it, quickly get on our social media platforms. Some of the um, clips and videos from today's conversations will be posted on our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube, uh, all at Plus TV Africa. It's bye from me. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. And I am Aneta Felix. Bye-bye.